Tropical savannas refer to captivating pockets of trees and other natural botanical life within large expanses of grasses and shrubs. The wide range of vegetation in these savannas supports high levels of biodiversity. While they are mostly located on plains, they can also be found on rolling hills and valleys. Savannas occur in tropical regions owing to soil conditions, climate and human activities like fires or agriculture, all of which limit primary productivity. Primary productivity refers to the production of organic substances including plant tissue through photosynthesis. In tropical savannas, the primary productivity is either too low to support respiration associated with the woody tissues of trees so that woody structures are unable to thrive or are destroyed. The repo savannas of Trinidad are an example of edaphic savannas in that they develop primarily as a result of characteristics of the soil and not because of climatic conditions. The repo savannas is a natural savanna and it occurs um, in the area because of soil conditions. Um, because of the soil conditions, woody vegetation just cannot grow in these areas. It um, is waterlogged during the wet season and is completely dried out uh, during the dry season. So the vegetation just cannot get enough water and sometimes it just gets too much water. Primary productivity is therefore extremely low and cannot support the respiration required by larger plants. As a result, plants remain small and stunted, except where there are pockets of fertile soil. The Rupununi savannas of Guyana, on the other hand, are an example of climactic savannas. The rainfall in these areas is seasonal, so primary productivity is very restricted for at least half of the year. The vegetation needs to cope with either drought or periods of water logging. Ponds are therefore a common feature of the Rupununi savannas. These ponds generally dry up in the dry season, although some have water all year round. Savannas are very important from the standpoint that uh, they're between the Kanaku Mountains and the Pacaraimo Mountains. The uh, wetlands also are contiguous. In fact, they're part of the savannas because seasonally the savannas would be flooded and the wetlands themselves are very important in that it's part of the drainage system, uh, both uh, into the Rio Branco system in Brazil, as well as into the Essequibo system in Guyana. A broad variety of plants have adapted to wet and dry conditions and exist in and around the ponds. However, woody plants such as deciduous trees can still dominate if there are no fires in the climactic savannas. But grasses, herbs and sedges usually dominate because fires do occur periodically and destroy the woody vegetation. In other parts of the world, such as the East African savannas, animal grazing serves the same function as fires in removing primary productivity and destroying the woody vegetation. Fires may occur naturally as a result of lightning strikes during thunderstorms. However, in certain parts of the Caribbean, Human activities such as slash and burn agriculture and unregulated burning for clearing are thought to be the main source of fires. Savannas therefore tend to increase at the expense of dry deciduous forest in the presence of humans. It is thought that dry deciduous forest was far more extensive in the Neotropics during and at the end of the last ice age. Savannas are ecologically important areas because of their rich biodiversity. The repo savannas are home to some 457 different types of plants, many of which are rare or threatened species. At least two species of grasses and herbs are endemic to the area. This means that they are found only in the repo savannas. 128 species of birds have been recorded. It is one of the few places in Trinidad and Tobago where the red-bellied macaw and the Maurice Oriole are found. 26 different species of mammals have been recorded inside of the Aripo savannas and some of these are very important to their ecosystem such as the red brocket there, porcupines, armadillos and of course the ever popular agouti which is so critical to ensuring that this ecosystem remains vibrant. In addition to all of this amazing biodiversity is an array of 
reptiles and amphibians. Of course, the anaconda is one of them. And we have the lovely gallop turtles. Then you have all of the colorful butterflies such as the sulfurs and morphos. And we cannot forget the dragonflies, damselflies, and all of the things that make up the Aripo savanna into an amazing web of life. The rich biodiversity that characterizes tropical savannas makes them invaluable for scientific research and education. These living laboratories provide students from the primary to university levels with hands-on learning experiences. The Rupununi savannas of Guyana also contain an exceptional diversity of wildlife. They are home to a number of Amerindian villages that depend on the waterways of the savannas for their subsistence. The savannas are also important because we have uh, the Makushi tribe, um, the communities of Amerindian people who have been populating the savannas for many, many uh, centuries. Uh, they have a very symbiotic relationship with the savannas. They started out as um, hunters gatherers, uh, dependent on the uh, resources of the forest and the savannas to provide them with their their shelters, their food, their sustenance. Um, their cultures are very closely tied with the savannas and the mountains. The rivers of the Rupununi are filled with huge caimans, the world's largest water lilies, and a variety of colorful birds. In the Caribbean, ecotourism is growing in economic importance. The bird watching, plant and orchid observation, hiking and photography make these landscapes attractive destinations. Recurrent fires are a major threat to edaphic savanna ecosystems. Fires may cause the death of important species of plants and animals and result in critical changes to the overall functioning of the ecosystem. By removing large trees, undergrowth and leaf litter, the area's microclimate is changed and this affects the ability of the species to recover from the disturbance. Some plants can withstand fire while others cannot. And those animals and insects that move slowly will be more affected than those who move quickly, like birds and flying insects. Fires also pave the way for another type of threat. Exotic invasive species such as bamboo, which are not usually found in these ecosystems, start to take over and prevent the natural ecosystems from recovering as they are more resilient to conditions created after fires. Another main threat facing the Aripo savanna is that of illegal agriculture activities. Farmers tend to use flash and burn to burn areas in and around the savanna causing encroachment within the Aripo savannas itself. Residential squatting also poses a threat to the savanna, creating greater pressures on the resources in and around the savannas itself. When surrounding areas are converted from mainly forest and low-intensity agricultural lands to industrial and residential estates, this also leads to ecological isolation. This means that plant and animal species can no longer move about in a series of continuous ecosystems, but instead are confined to islands surrounded by a sea of development. The result is that these smaller populations become more vulnerable to adverse genetic changes from inbreeding and local extinction. Two other human activities that have had serious and long-lasting negative effects on Caribbean savannas are logging and quarrying. This damage is seen in the Aripo savannas in Trinidad, where the effects of logging decades ago is still evident today. Some tree species that used to be dominant in the Aripo savannas, such as the galba, are no longer there in large quantities. There are also fewer plants that some animals depend on for their survival. Large-scale quarrying of sand and gravel along the banks of the Aripo River has disturbed areas of forest and palm swamp, and has destroyed sections of the subsoil or bedrock of the area. If you abuse the ecosystem, if you take the timber out in such a way that too much is taken out and the ecosystem processes are disrupted, then you destroy the very resource that you're looking at. And its value, its biodiversity value, has been diminished. And it cannot continue because it is a relatively small area 
and we need to conserve it as much as possible. In June 2007, the Aripo Savannas was named an environmentally sensitive area under the Environmental Management Act of 2000. Key to protecting the delicate ecosystems of savannas is the use of landscape management and strict zoning within these designated environmentally sensitive areas. This requires environmental agencies to work with farmers and communities in and around the savannas to help them adopt practices that protect the environment. This includes fire management, boundary protection and exotic invasive species control. Zoning allows for a wide variety of activities in the area while preserving the natural environment. This practice can facilitate education, scientific research, environmental monitoring and habitat restoration of these unique biomes. Education combined with uh, legislation, monitoring, enforcement and uh, evaluation, you know, review and evaluation to ensure that uh, what you said you will do is in fact being done and it's not just a paper arrangement. We always have competing interests. Um, the investment, re the economy versus not having that investment. Um, there are a lot of spin to it. Some say jobs are created um, which in, in turn increases the economy and the betterment of, of the public in general. And there is another uh, school that thinks that um, the, the benefits don't outweigh the, the loss. Citizens can play a role by reporting any observed mismanagement. Additionally, research, governmental and environmental agencies must work together with neighboring communities and the general public to preserve these wonders of nature. Clear blue waters, sun-kissed shore, 